Hey everybody, it's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna take a look at debugging your server-side JavaScript with Node in Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so this video is basically gonna be a follow-up to my last video. And in the last one, we took a look at debugging client-side JavaScript. So we, we got into our Chrome developer tools, and I can open this up here. Uh, we went into our source tab, or sources tab, and we did things like using a debugger statement. We set debug statement, or debug breakpoints in Chrome. We looked at the call stack, the scope, all that kind of stuff. And then we, we kind of switched that up and we went into Visual Studio Code to do that. But again, that was all client-side JavaScript, and now we're gonna take a look at uh, debugging our, uh, our server-side JavaScript. So this is the same application that we used before. If you're interested in this, the link to the repository is below. You can clone this. Uh, there's also a, a series, if you go back through the videos, called Design and Build a Chat Application with Socket.io if you wanna learn how to build this application from scratch. But this is what we're gonna start with, so you can grab that source code if you wanna use it. Otherwise, you can just kinda of follow along and apply these concepts into your own Node project and be able to debug from there. So let's, uh, let's come back to Visual Studio Code because that's where we're gonna spend the majority of our times. And again, just a, a quick refresher if you didn't watch that previous video. Uh, Visual Studio Code has this debug tab here, and so it's the file system, then debug here. And it'll open up your launch JSON file, and if you don't have one, uh, it'll create one for you. And this is my default configuration for debugging the client side JavaScript, which we won't worry about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and add a configuration and we're just gonna say, uh, let's start with uh, node and then we'll do a node launch. Where is launch? Launch program. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for our app.js and our app.js is our uh, node server. So here's all of our server side code. And the launch JSON, this is gonna launch the program and then we're gonna tell it which program by defining it as app.js, which just matches the name of that file. So we'll go ahead and save this and then uh, we'll come down to our drop-in, come up to our drop-down and we'll select launch program. We'll go ahead and start this and then our debug console, once it's uh, up and running, should pop up down here. See that in a second, hopefully. Oh, it didn't actually pop up, so I'll just click on it. Uh, we did get this pop-up up here, which shows that we are running in debug mode. Uh, and you can see here that it's gone ahead and it started the uh, the debug session and it's using no dash dash debug and it's given a little warning here to say that that's deprecated. I'll show you how we can use the node inspect here in a minute instead, uh, which is kind of the, the, the way going forward, I guess, how to do debugging with node. So we'll do that, but this uh, by default, this is using the, the uh, debug. And I think that that might be based on the version of node I have. So if you've got a newer version of node, eight or 10 or something like that, you probably won't even, even see this warning. But for now, it's there, we'll fix it in a second, so not to worry about it. So uh, we've got this up and running. We, we can see our, our pause button, our stop and restart. If I come into our app.js, and let's say I just put a breakpoint here for when a user connects, and then I come in to localhost 3000, which is where our server is running, and do a refresh, we should go ahead and trigger that breakpoint. So uh, this, if you've done debugging, uh, none of this will be, none of these concepts by themselves will be new. And if you need a, a kind of an additional reference for debugging in general, check out the previous video that I have. Uh, but we, we set a breakpoint here on line 15. Once we got to that point in the code, Visual Studio Code just basically paused the execution of our program so that we could go in and, and inspect what things look like more or less. So if we look at uh, local, we can see what the, uh, what variables are in the local scope here for this function. So we've got uh, the socket, which is this parameter here. We've got the this keyword, uh, which is the basically the scope for the function as a whole. And then we've got a couple of closure. We've got the script, so things that are in a script file, and this might be more particular to uh, front-end client-side JavaScript. And then we've got our global object as well uh, in Node. So really what we care about here is the the local scope here. And we could also uh, add a watch. So if we were looking for socket, anytime we wanted to know what was in that socket variable, we could come and put it in here and then we'll see what it is. All right, so uh, again, th these are things that 
if you're not familiar with, go back and check out the previous video. Uh, go and look in and do some debugging. This is going to be specific to how to accomplish these things with Node. So it's going to basically be a lot of the configuration and setup, which is something that I, I struggled with for a while. So hopefully this is really useful for you guys. Uh, but if you, you've got the, the locals or the variables with your local scope, you've got watch, you've got call stack, and then you've got all the breakpoints that you've got listed here. But the main thing is that we were able to trigger, uh, trigger this breakpoint here by using a debug configuration here to go ahead and launch our app.js node server. And it started up in debug mode with dash dash debug, which is deprecated. We'll use dash dash inspect in a second. But it started all that stuff up and we're able to debug from there, which is super, super useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this, let it continue, and then I'll go ahead and stop it. So let's stop that debug. And let's go ahead and take a look at a, uh, a different kind of debug session. So let's come in here, we'll add another one. And this is really handy that, that uh, VS Code gives you these basically kind of shortcut templates for uh, debug configuration so you don't have to think too much about what you're doing. Uh, but again, it did take me a little, little while to figure it all, figure it all out. Uh, so then we've got, uh, let's say, attached to process. So this is going to uh, attach to an existing process. So I'm gonna come in to my terminal. And if I just do a node app JS, this is not actually running this in debug mode. So if I go ahead and run this, let's do attach by process, go ahead and run it, and then it'll let me choose what process I wanna to, want to attach to. This is the one that I ran, so I'll choose that one. And you should see debuggers listening here. We'll get to uh, our app.js, we've still got our breakpoint, and if we, and I'm not sure why this is triggering, uh, this is a file that we could probably ignore in our debug configuration, but let's just continue there. Uh, and you see that, that uh, it's triggering this breakpoint. I think it's triggering because we are uh, connect the debuggers connecting. So this is this is triggering just because of the the connection with the debug, the debug connection. So let's continue this and then we'll do another refresh on our application and we should trigger that uh, breakpoint again. There we go. So notice also that this is saying uh, no dash dash debug is deprecated. Please use inspect instead. So what uh, what I want to do uh, is we'll cancel out that session. Uh, we'll still use the same configuration, but when I run this now, I'm gonna do dash dash inspect and then app.js. So we'll go ahead and start that up. And you'll see by default, this is going to open up uh, open up uh, debugging for this application. And then when we do an attach by process, it should go ahead and attach cleanly to this without giving you any, uh, any uh, deprecated warnings or anything like that. If we look in the debug console, uh, we can see the output of our program uh, here and this is really what we're looking for. Uh, so we go ahead and refresh. We should trigger that breakpoint again, which is great. All right. So uh, when you go ahead and start your process uh, in uh, Node, uh, go ahead and use the dash dash inspect instead of dash dash debug going forward. Assuming again, I don't know. Uh, somebody would have to double check the versions for me. But if you're greater than seven, I think it, or maybe eight at eight and higher, uh, you'll switch over to the um, to the dash dash inspect instead of debug. All right, I'm gonna close close this down one more time. Uh, so then the next kind of configuration that we're gonna look at, let's uh, open back up here, add a configuration. We've got attach to process, and then we've got an attach here. So this one, we can attach to a port. So if I start back up uh, node dash dash inspect app.js and I run that, the default debug port that it's listening on is 9229. So instead of having to do a drop down to choose the process, the node process that we started, we can actually just attach to a specific port. And because 9229 is the default port, I don't have to change anything here. And I can choose, uh, let's say, attach to port, just to be a little more descriptive. It would choose that one, attach to port, and we'll run it. And we should get basically the same thing we've been seeing. We'll successfully uh, attach in debug mode. We should see it pop up here. In the debug console, we'll see it there. And the terminal debugger was attached. Do a refresh on our application and trigger this breakpoint again. Uh, so it's basically the same thing. These are just different ways to accomplish that same thing. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that one. One thing that I think is is useful here is you can in your package JSON you can define a start script and a debug script, and you can use those. So instead of instead of typing in the no dash dash inspect, you can actually uh, define your script here. So a debug script that's going to do that same command and then just type npm run debug. And that'll be kind of a, a standard command that you can use and maybe you, maybe you wanna tweak the settings in here, but your oops, your alias will, uh, will be the same and you won't have to worry about that. You could always use that one. All right, so that is uh, one, two, three different ways that we can do this. 
And there's one more, and this is going to be, uh, and I hope you guys have this question. This is going to be when you're using Nodemon. So Nodemon is uh, something is an express or not? Excuse me, an npm package that you can install globally that you can use to run your application. So Nodemon app js and what happens is nodemon will automatically restart your server every time you save a file so if i save here notice that it's going to restart at the bottom so this is super useful so when you're uh, kind of doing your testing and you, and you really need to make changes and see the difference and you don't want to restart every time you can run nodemon on your server file and it will automatically restart every time you save a file but this isn't super useful let me uh let me try something real quick nodemon dash dash inspect app js so we're going to open nodemon in debug mode and then we'll try to let's try to run attached to a process id for example so we'll go ahead and run this we'll choose the node inspect app js because it's running at uh for at that specific process so we'll try to attach to it we attach to it but now when we save our javascript our server file you notice we've lost our debug connection because now we basically restarted the no dash dash inspect command, which gave it a different process ID, which means we've now lost our process ID. So I'm going to uh, come in here and we're going to, instead of using process ID, let's go ahead and attach to a port and let's set the restart to true. So anytime our server is going to restart or anytime the what's at this part port restarts, we will restart the debug session as well so let's try this one more time nodemon dash dash inspect app js and then we'll go ahead and connect by choosing uh, i'll just call this nodemon because uh, that's really what i'm using it for so let's why is that not going back nodemon debug whatever you want to call it all right and then i'll choose nodemon debug and run that and it should get connected down here in a second. All right, debugger attached. Debug console, you see all the output. Uh, if we refresh our page, we should trigger that same breakpoint. Press play. Let's make a change now. User connected and a space. And then let's save it. And notice that we'll restart our server down here. And also our debug session is restarting as well. So it takes a couple seconds, but it automatically gets restarted and doing another refresh and uh, on the website will now trigger the breakpoint in the uh, in the debug session in Visual Studio Code as well. So this is probably uh, this is probably the most useful configuration that you guys will need. And this is something that took me a while to figure out because I couldn't find that much documentation around it. So hopefully this kind of gives you guys a little nugget that you maybe have looked for before, maybe not, but if you did, you might have had some trouble with. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be the most common thing, common debug scenario you're going to have where you're going to run Nodemon to auto reload your server and then attach against that. And in case the, this wasn't clear, to get Nodemon, uh, do an npm install dash g and then Nodemon. So that'll save it globally on your system. All right, so just as a quick wrap up, uh, debugging VS Code, this is, this is for server side JavaScript. You can go back to my previous video for client side JavaScript. Uh, but VS Code is awesome for debugging. You get access to your variables to look at what your actual actual data looks like. You can basically put spies on different pieces of data that you're looking for, examine the call stack, go through breakpoints, all this different good stuff. And then there's there's a couple of different configurations that you can use uh, when working with Node. So uh, let's see. The first one is you can do just a launch of your program. And depending on the version of Node or maybe the version of VS Code, I'm not really sure, uh, it will go ahead and launch your application, whatever you define here, in debug mode, and then uh, and then attach to it. Or you could go ahead and run your Node server by yourself, so on your own, and then attach to it by the process ID. Or you could do the same thing and attach to it by the default port. And then you can configure this one step further by setting restart to true in case you're using Nodemon to auto restart your server, your debug session will restart as well. So I guys, I hope this was useful for you. This has taken me uh, a while to kind of get my head around. I've tried messing with debugging off and on for a while now and, and kind of just feel comfortable with getting it configured in VS Code, something I'm super, super excited about. I think you guys should be too. This will this will be really useful for you as you start to get better as a developer and start to take advantage of all the tools and great functionality uh, that are out there to help you debug things and everything along the way that comes with web development. So I wanna thank you guys for joining this video. If you liked what you saw, 
uh, like the channel or like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, uh, let me know what you think. Find me on Twitter at James Q Quick. I would love to hear from you. Whatever you're working on, things that are going well, things that you're struggling with, things you might want to see in this uh, YouTube channel, I would love to hear from you. So thanks again for checking out the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.